Let's look at an example of inference for one proportion. Here we will calculate a confidence interval and conduct a hypothesis test on the population proportion p. We'll use large sample methods based on the normal approximation. Here's the example we'll look at. A study investigated the proportion of male births in Liverpool, England. The study investigated a possible association between smoking and the proportion of male births, but in this video we are going to look at the proportion of male births to non-smoking parents. In a sample of 5,045 births to non-smoking parents, there were 2,685 males and 2,360 females born. The sample proportion of male births, p hat, is equal to 2,685 over 5,045 which, to four decimal places, is equal to 0.5322. In this video, we will construct a confidence interval for p, the population proportion of male births to non-smoking parents in Liverpool, and we will test the null hypothesis that the population proportion of male births is 0.5. We might naively think that the true proportion should be equal to exactly 0.5, and want to test that notion. The sample proportion of 0.5322 is a little bigger than 0.5, and we're going to test to see whether that sample data gives strong evidence that the true proportion is in fact different from 0.5. Here again is the sample proportion and sample size, and suppose we wish to construct a 95% confidence interval for the parameter p. Our formula for constructing the confidence interval is the sample proportion p hat, plus and minus the margin of error, which is made up of the usual z sub alpha over 2 value that we've looked at previously, times the standard error of p hat. For confidence intervals, the standard error of p hat is the square root of p hat times 1 minus p hat over n. Here, that works out to 0 0.0070. I'm displaying only four decimal places, but make sure you carry many decimal places throughout the calculations. Once we've got the standard error, the calculations are quite straightforward. p hat is 0.5322, and we've learned previously that the appropriate z value for a 95% confidence interval is 1.96, and we just calculated the standard error to be 0 0.0070. This all works out to 0.5322 plus and minus the margin of error of 0 0.0138, which results in an interval of 0.5182.546, and we can be 95% confident that the parameter p lies somewhere in that interval. What does this mean in the context of this problem? It means we can be 95% confident that the true proportion of male births lies between 0.518 and 0.546. This is for births to non-smoking parents in Liverpool. The entire interval lies to the right of 0.5, giving a pretty strong indication that the true proportion of male births is greater than 0.5. If this is our point of interest, we can carry out a more formal hypothesis test. Let's test the null hypothesis that the true proportion of male births is 0.5 against the two-sided alternative hypothesis that it differs from 0.5. We may not have had any preconceived notion about whether the proportion is greater or less than 0.5, and I, for one, would be interested in a difference in either direction, so I think a two-sided alternative hypothesis is appropriate here. Here we want to test the null hypothesis that the parameter p is equal to 0.5, against the alternative hypothesis that it differs from 0.5. The sample size is very large here, so methods based on the normal approximation are very reasonable. Here the z statistic is equal to the sample proportion minus the hypothesized value over the standard error of the sample proportion, where the standard error of the sample proportion is equal to the square root of p0 times 1 minus p0 over n. In inference for proportions, the standard error for hypothesis tests differs from the standard error for confidence intervals. For confidence intervals, we use the sample proportion in the formula, and for hypothesis tests, we use the hypothesized proportion. These two standard errors are often pretty close in value. Here the hypothesized value is 0.5,
and the standard error works out to 0 0.0070. To four decimal places, this is the same as the standard error for the confidence interval, but if I displayed more decimal places, we'd see that it's slightly different. Once we've got the standard error, the Z statistic is simple to calculate. The Z statistic is equal to the sample proportion of 0.5322 minus the hypothesized proportion of 0 0.5 divided by the standard error of 0 0.0070. And if we carried all of the decimal places throughout the calculation, which we should do, we'd see that this is equal to 4.576. Now we're going to get a p-value. Here are the hypotheses again, and I've drawn in the standard normal distribution. If the null hypothesis is true, the test statistic has approximately the standard normal distribution. The observed value of the test statistic, 4.576, falls right about here on this distribution. That's pretty far out in the right tail, indicating pretty darn strong evidence against the null hypothesis and we're going to quantify the strength of that evidence with a p-value. The alternative hypothesis is two-sided, so the p-value is double the area and the tail beyond the observed value of the test statistic. Here that's double the area to the right of 4.576 under the standard normal curve. Using software, we could find that the p-value is 4.7 times 10 to the minus 6. And if we didn't have access to software and we had to use the standard normal table, we couldn't find the exact value, but we could say that the p-value is very small and very close to zero. A very small p-value like this gives very strong evidence against the null hypothesis and in favor of the alternative hypothesis. But what does that mean in the context of this problem? First of all, it means there is very strong evidence, with this very small p-value, that the true proportion of male births differs from 0.5. Even though that's a true statement, that's not a very informative conclusion. And in fact, on its own, it's almost useless. We really want to know in what way the true proportion differs from 0.5. The value of the sample proportion is 0.5322 and the confidence interval for the population proportion fell entirely to the right of 0.5. And the Z test statistic fell far out in the right tail of the distribution. This leads to the overall gist that there is very strong evidence that the true proportion of male births is greater than 0.5. Recall that the sampled population was babies born to non-smoking parents in Liverpool, England. So we have very strong evidence that non-smoking parents in Liverpool have boys more often than girls. In another video, we're going to look at a possible association between parental smoking and the proportion of male births by comparing the male birth rate of non-smoking parents to that of heavy smoking parents.